Please note, this review only pertains to the campaign segment of Resident Evil 3. For a review of the additional multiplayer component of the game Resident Evil Resistance, stay tuned. The Resident Evil franchise has taken many forms over its decades in the survival horror scene, from the original tank control based entries to the third person over the shoulder antics of Resident Evil's 4 through 6, and recently more experimental forms such as first person and virtual reality. Last year, Capcom resurrected their beloved classic Resident Evil 2 with a new coat of paint that impressed fans old and new alike. Fast forward less than a year and we quickly received the announcement of a Resident Evil 3 remake that would be releasing sooner rather than later. After months of excitement and trailers teasing new additions and revamps of classic monsters and set pieces, Resident Evil 3 has launched. Unfortunately, after multiple playthroughs, it feels like Capcom took one step forward and two steps back with this new venture. No way. One thing Capcom managed to supersede from their previous remake attempt is gameplay. Resident Evil 3, both here and in its 1999 original, is a much more action-focused experience. Less focused on the slow build-up of tension and more so on the consistent delivery of thrills and set pieces. The focus on action can definitely be felt through gameplay itself. Run speeds are slightly increased, ammo and resources are much more plentiful on standard difficulties, and the implementation of a quick step mechanic makes avoiding the undead a far less intense affair. This mechanic, when used correctly, can allow for either quick and easy dodges out of a zombie's path, or allow for a brief window of what can only be referred to as bullet time, where you can secure a few quick headshots to hopefully put down a nefarious zombie for good. The dodge roll completely reinvents gameplay and boss encounters as well, whereas in RE2 characters sometimes felt sluggish in their movements, which often leads to unfair amounts of damage being taken, the dodge roll allows for much more player freedom and accomplishment when it's pulled off correctly, especially when avoiding large crowds of the undead. Gunplay, whilst not having the same dismemberment tech from Resident Evil 2 and the strategy associated with it, is still as satisfying as ever. Managing to land that critical hit feels even more satisfying now, with added effects and vibrations in the controller making the GUI explosion that much more impactful. Each gun, whether it's the standard pistol or the grungy shotgun, all feel satisfying to use in their own right against the countless amounts of zombies you'll have to manage your resources around. Just one single zombie could easily empty anywhere from a couple of bullets to entire magazines, as their seemingly never-ending health pool could prompt them to keep on functioning despite your copious amounts of spent resources. To compensate, within the much-expanded streets and buildings of Raccoon City open for you to explore, environmental hazards such as explosive barrels and electrical generators are positioned generously. These items, however, whilst still being satisfying to use, feel far too plentiful at times, removing a lot of the tactical decision-making in how to use them. Electrical generators are also rechargeable, allowing you to abuse their capabilities to overcome great challenges. These do become less prevalent in later sections and higher difficulties, however, forcing you to expend ammo more wisely and time your quick steps just right in order to get that critical time slow. This difficulty curve is certainly adequate, but greatly reduces the tension associated with large hordes of the undead. The tension is amplified by the game's score, with its mix of high octane and more ambient tracks, not to mention the wave of relief that hits when you hear the welcoming piano notes of the safe room theme. As a contrast to Resident Evil 2's lack of music for the majority of its areas in order to immerse you in the environments, the faster pace of Jill's story is greatly accompanied by the inclusion of these tracks. As a result, you're constantly on high alert for any zombies that may impede main character Jill Valentine's progress. Jill herself, still reeling from the events of the original Resident Evil game, is on the hunt for the elusive Umbrella Corporation and their role in the outbreak in the Spencer Mansion. Hello? The hunter soon becomes the hunted, however, as the hulking nemesis bursts through Jill's apartment walls, sparking the chase that makes up most of the early hours of the campaign. Early nemesis encounters, whilst tightly scripted and quick-time event-based for the most part, incite thrills as the creature pursues Jill with great determination. This can be felt especially through his new, more beastly sounding battle cry. You shitting me? Nemesis is at his most terrifying when he isn't restrained by a scripted series of events and allowed to roam freely through natural gameplay. 
areas which you once familiarized yourself with early in the campaign now have the added factor of Nemesis running after you, forcing you to abandon routes and strategies you once had in order to test your skills and make you think on the fly. Unlike Mr. X from the previous remake, Nemesis Toolkit is much more involved. In addition to him being able to use weapons, at any time he can shift from a slow march to a terrifying sprint within a matter of seconds. As the player, your options are often between fight or flight. Whilst the latter does allow you to save valuable resources, Nemesis long range tentacle and sprint attacks often feel as though the game is pushing you to fight the beast. If you choose to engage, you're rewarded with supply crates that contain valuable weapon upgrades and resources. Fighting the Nemesis may sound like a challenge, and whilst at times it certainly is, the abundance of the aforementioned environmental hazards and resources, especially grenades, often makes these encounters a breeze. One example of this is a specific scripted entrance for him, where you could use a pre-equipped grenade to deal damage to both Nemesis and a nearby generator, blitzing its health down in mere seconds and allowing you to get the upgrade and run off free of any harm. When you don't have the benefit of these combat aids on your side, however, pursuits are genuinely terrifying. The use of a claustrophobic third-person perspective complements this, allowing for the option of either looking straight ahead whilst not knowing how far behind the pursuer is, or behind without knowing what dangers may lie ahead. Carlos! That thing is still alive! It's after me! What? Run! Come back to the station! Nemesis is the epitome of Resident Evil 3's more action-centered approach. Unlike the slow-walking tyrant from the previous entry, Nemesis isn't afraid to get up in your face and make his ghastly yet wonderfully detailed presence known. Sadly, these occurrences flicker out towards the latter half of the game, where he only appears in certain boss fights and cutscenes. Despite these later encounters being greatly handled in their own right, this limitation has the unfortunate effect of making him a much less memorable foe. In the original, Nemesis was persistent, appearing frequently throughout, never stopping in his pursuits. The idea of not knowing where or when he would make himself known added greatly to the tension, and kept you on your toes at all times. In comparison, the remake sadly doesn't reach the same heights with Nemesis that were present in the original. Luckily, the human cast feel much more improved in this update in comparison to their beastly fiends. It can use weapons. Jill Valentine as a character is much more realized and fleshed out than previous incarnations. Her added sarcasm and no-nonsense attitude Carlos, serves as a nice contrast to Carlos, a wisecracking 90s-era Keanu Reeves-esque mercenary. You have to circle around through an alley to your right to get there. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. <sighs> Fuck you. Character models and facial expressions have also received a surprise refinement from RE2. Models are more detailed and their emotions are perfectly captured thanks to the performances of both characters, as well as the excellently crafted cutscenes showcasing the cast with beautiful graphical fidelity and lighting. Both characters are playable throughout the campaign, with Jill's sections feeling much closer to classic Resident Evil than Carlos, which feel closer in gameplay and tone to that of Resident Evil 5 or 6. Carlos comes equipped with an assault rifle, with plenty of ammo sprinkled throughout his playable areas, which often means mowing down groups of zombies has little consequence in terms of resource drain. Though whilst his sections do offer a nice reprieve and sense of catharsis from the much more tension-filled segments with Jill, it confuses the overall horror tone of the game. This is a departure from Resident Evil 2, which had far more nuanced writing and tone. In RE3, early minutes offer a much welcomed insight into Jill's internal psychological struggle in the wake of previous games. But this subplot is pushed aside for most of the narrative in exchange for set pieces and action. There's unfortunately little resolution to this part of the story, with the conclusion that is presented feeling quickly put together and unsatisfying considering everything that she's gone through. This narrative thread could have also provided opportunities for Capcom to deliver a partial psychological horror experience, but those possibilities are unfortunately squandered. Side characters get little time devoted to characterization, but the core dynamic between Jill and Carlos is handled particularly well, especially in regards to Carlos' arc. She'll get you killed. Sorry about that. Everyone's a little worked up. Resident Evil 3 definitely feels akin to a short but sweet experience. The first playthrough will usually clock in under 5 hours of game time, with the total duration including cutscenes, inventory management and document reading taking closer to 7. Repeat playthroughs are sure to last less, but a lack of any new content hurts the overall replay appeal. To accommodate for this, Capcom have included an in-game store that can be used to purchase items such as tokens that boost damage and defense, as well as additional weapons and key items. 
Harder difficulties do remix enemy and item placement, which offers a nice incentive for more playthroughs. Unfortunately, as an overall package, the campaign of Resident Evil 3 feels far too lean for its full price at launch. Despite its short length, Resident Evil 3 is a fun ride that its relentless pace keeps your hands clasped to your controller from beginning to end. Compared to last year's Resident Evil 2 remake, slight additions and reinventions to the already established gameplay formula and tone help Resident Evil 3 pave a way for its own definitive identity. One that is less recommendable as a direct sequel, but more as a companion piece that offers even more of what you loved from the previous entry. Unfortunately, an expanded gameplay arsenal and scale don't amend the lack of general replay value in Nemesis encounters, diminishing what could have been an even greater experience.